Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're going to start a new show and tell video and I got some good stuff to show you. First thing we've got here is a brand new pair of BF Goodrich 11 2 by 28 uh, tractor tires with a matching pair of genuine BF Goodrich inner tubes. Our old buddy Trusty Rusty has got about a 30 year old pair of Goodyears on it and they still got lots of lug and there's no cracks but one of them has developed kind of a lump in the side of it. And when I get out on the road and I get all the transmissions in high gear, it goes about 24 miles an hour. And the one back side of it's going whomp, whomp, whomp. It keeps trying to throw you out of the seat into the ditch. That's not cool. So we're going to put these on Trusty Rusty. And I got such a good deal on these at the auction. I basically got everything for the price of one tire. Couldn't say no to that. At the same auction, we've got enough nine ends and two ends around this place. Um, these front wheels have already been sandblasted and primed and painted. They could use another coat of paint from being uh, knocked around, but they're really in nice, nice shape. Like they were nice wheels to start with. You could tell by, by looking at them, they weren't all scabs and pits and everything. These are really nice wheels. We'll use them up on one of our nice nine ends. Here's a pair of plant hangers we got for Deb at the auction. Somebody's modified them a bit. We have to just heat this up and bend these back so all three prongs go into the ground. They're about six feet tall, and uh, we'll get these fixed up and stick them out in the front yard or the backyard in the spring. We've got um, one of our future projects, an old 47 Dodge pickup truck. It's pretty much complete, but one thing that I was have been looking for is a rear bumper for it. Now, back in those days, trucks didn't come with a rear bumper, so uh, mostly farmers had them, and they would like to have a rear bumper on them, so they would grab something off an old car, or even have a local welding shop make something up. But I found these at the auction, and they're pretty cool. There's three of them. Apparently, they're from um, pre-war Buicks, like late 30s Buicks. There is, um, this one seems to have an extra rib in it that these ones don't, so I don't know if, um, it's a combination of uh, fronts and rears. I don't know. We'll figure it out. And I've got over there a whole mess of mounting brackets for them. Uh, this here, I got this whole pile of exhaust stuff for four bucks. I figured for four bucks, if all I do is bring it home and throw it in my scrap metal trailer, I'll at least break even. But it's all, um, I didn't realize till I got there, it's all three inch. So these are um, three inch glass packs and a pair of three inch flow pro welded mufflers plus a bunch of tips and stuff we'll go through it it'll get used up for something around here or uh rehomed or horse traded for something we can actually use and here we've got yet another black and decker valve grinding machine this one is adorable i've never seen one like this it seems to be complete um we'll uh i get a uh, maybe give it a safety check and put a couple of new ends on the cords and and we'll we'll try it out this is like a tiny little bench top one it's it's adorable and i'd like to see if i could find this belt um this flat belt is going to need replacing that's for sure we also got this um great big roll of one and a quarter pvc i want to run um an airline and a couple of other things over to the the barn over there i've already got one big roll of this so this added to it hopefully will be enough to get us there i got this great little bumper this is like a nice bumper we're gonna put this on the oliver 550 um once we get it sorted out and i get the loader off of it somebody's welded a hitch receiver on the front of it absolutely ideal that oliver 550 is going to be a real workhorse around here once we get it straightened out and this is going to make it even more versatile this is a really cool thing, and I think it's new. I don't think it's ever been used. It's an in-dash AM FM radio with a 23-channel CB built into it. There's the, the faceplate. I was worried that that wasn't there, but, it, but it's there. Um, so we're all good. We can put this in one of our, uh, one of our oldies. It's got, look, it's got a SWR meter built right into it. It's got the rubber adapter for a Ford with it. Oh, yeah, this is going to be awesome. 
Uh, and last, I got this little Mastercraft roll-around toolbox. I've wanted, um, for over in the basement of the barn, a roll-around toolbox. So just so I could keep some stuff in it, and it's all kind of in one place. Um, and as a bonus, I didn't realize until I got it, there's all kinds of little bits and pieces of stuff in it. Like, that's interesting. There's a file. There's um, um, some machine shop things. This here is... A black and decker reversible tapping chuck okay so that I'm not sure how well that works because you can see it's got a busted tap in it <laughs> but hey it's something to try we've got a uh, a number one Morse taper uh, drill chuck and a few little bits and pieces in here I gotta go um I gotta get the the lock the lock cylinder pulled out of it and either um, remove all the all the tumblers from it so I can just not that I really want to lock it it's just it's a nice way of latching this this door right so we'll uh, we'll work on that you can usually buy these things on Amazon for like five bucks or something so uh, that's a little project we can do this here don't ask me why I bought this it was going past it looked like a deal at the time it's a faff industrial sewing machine from back in the day in um this is an original faff table like this is a, i don't know why it's got a singer uh singer why the foot pedal says singer but it's a it's a faff machine and you can see here how this thing works unlike a like a, a home use sewing machine where you've got the you know you've got the, the little treadle pedal there that's like a rheostat that controls the speed of the motor this guy here has got this motor. It's a third horse motor that runs constantly. The belt, you can see here, the belt goes up to the sewing machine. And you can see here, you operate, this is a clutch. You'll see this move here. See that? It's got a clutch. And that's how you, that's how you run the machine. Pretty cool. If we can get this thing working, it'd be awesome. I have to go, there are parts available for these old FAF machines. I, I just did some very, very preliminary research. So we're going to see because Deb thinks there's stuff missing under here for the where the, the bobbin and that goes. So we're gonna we're gonna see if we can find out about it. If it's if it's hopeless, we can at least use the table and maybe put a different machine on it. Here's an excellent load of loot donated to us by Nick at the Real Guy Garage. I'll put a link to his channel in the description box below. He uh, does a lot of interesting stuff. It's mostly Ford. Um, wheel cylinder and caliper kits and Ford exhaust donuts. We'll go through it and, um, and I'm sure there's lots of goodies there. And he brought me one set of new old stock uh, slant six ignition cables. That's pretty good. Pretty good seeing as how we've got a couple of slanters around here. And he also brought us this really cool piece. It's like a 19... Uh, 61 or 62 Ford 221 engine. We think it's a 221. It may be a 260, but it's more than likely that it's a 221. It's got the the five bolt bell housing. Um, it's it's an oldie. This is literally one of the first Ford Windsor small blocks uh, made. Right, that's when they first started making them. You can see, look, neat stuff. Look, it's got the funny balancer on it. It does have a rebuilder tag on it, although it is, it's seized as tight as a drum, but um, I don't know what we'll do with it, but uh, he knows I like my Fords, so he brought it over here. We'll, we'll get it on an engine stand and maybe shoot some oil down the cylinders and see if we can get it, get it freed up. My bad, I, uh, I busted the fuel pump off picking it up with the forklift, but uh, we can fix that. So Nick and me were at the auction yesterday, and Nick bought this. Um, it's a Ford 2N. You'll see the steel wheels on the back. This one is, in fact, a war horse um, from about serial number 100 000 to about 120 000 or XXX. They built these. They came with steel wheels, no electrical system, crank start, and they ran on a magneto. Um, it was wartime stuff, right? After the war, most of them got the electrical systems added back onto them and so they were you know more easily used but this one still has at least its rear steel wheels 
So uh, this is actually the second one of these that he has now. And uh, we have one here. So between him and me, we've got three of them now. <laughs> yeah, we like these old things. Look at all this stuff. Here's a bunch of junk I got all uh, as one lot for $4. Also included in this lot was a four foot, um, nice, um, a four foot magnesium bricklayers level. I gave that to my brother because he didn't have one. But um, this was pretty good. Mostly I bought this because I want this, um, I wanted this set of wrenches because the old Oliver 550 over there, I want to start just a kind of a little, all my tractors have a little little bit of a, a tool kit in the toolbox on them. So uh, this will get that started. Uh, I got a keyhole saw, like I need more of those. And another back saw, don't need any more of those. Here's something you use everywhere on the farm, a fence plier. We got a little axe with a nail puller. All right, and this here, uh, that's a battery terminal plier. So that's a handy thing. To have. Look, it's her brand too. Pretty nice. And here's one of those flashlights that you put on your head. Uh, either the battery's dead or the whole thing is dead. We'll get to the bottom of that. Here's a whole bunch of stuff I got all in one load again. Um, some interesting things here. I've checked these. They've all got live batteries in them and they all work. So we've got a stud sensor, an electronic tape measure, and a cheesy multimeter. Here we've got 3,000 and 5,000 PSI pressure gauges. They're for hydraulic systems. Um, two different battery hydrometers, a serious one and a not so serious one. Uh, two different coolant hydrometers. We've got a compression gauge with, uh, it looks like both sides, yeah, this one is screwed onto there, but that's small plug and that's large plug. Um, three different spark testers, that's cool. Uh, these, this you plug into your outlets and it tells you if it's good or not. This is a little more basic version of it. And this scares the living hell out of me. I guess uh, originally this would have plugged into a meter or something. Um, I think the best thing to do with this is put it in there. Um, and this here, these are the best. This is an old, old, old school timing light. Um, pretty handy. It just goes in line with in the spark plug wire. And great just for checking for spark, you know. It's a handy thing. So all in all, this was a pretty good darn, a pretty darn good loot. Lo <clears throat> Boy, all in all, this was a pretty good load of stuff for what I paid for it. I can't remember, but it was like less than 20 bucks. Here's a load of engine tools that we got. There's some good stuff here. Um, I've got two different kinds of valve spring compressors for overhead valve engines. This is a screw type. This is a cam, a cam type. We've got one here for flatheads. Uh, I've got a pretty nice hone here. Uh, let's see what kind it is. Does it say? No, no, no name on it. But anyway, it's a decent enough looking hole. Uh, feeler gauge. A couple of these things for lapping valves. Compound for lapping valves. We got a, a piston ring compressor. And we got this thing, which is really cool. I've already got most of a set of this. Um, so these were for not cutting valve seats, but just cleaning them up. If you were doing a kind of a, a decarbonizing job at home or whatever. So this would come with the, you pick the right mandrel for your size of valve guide, right? And that screws into there. See? And then this is a two-piece affair. It's got this spider here, right? And the casting in behind. And you put a piece of emery cloth over it. And tighten this down and you've just made yourself a valve seat grinder. Yeah, these were pretty popular back in the day. My dad probably used to sell these at their store. Kind of a fun little thing. I'll try it next time I'm doing a valve job. How's that? And it even comes with this, which is for the Ford flatheads. That's pretty cool. Here's a lot that came all together. I was mostly interested in these. These are for doing pinch welds. Um... 
for holding pinch welds together while you weld them. Pretty handy things. And then I saw this. This came with them. Um, it looks like somebody has made a, a pair of big snap ring pliers out of a vice grip. But this is a proper old school Irwin vice grip, you know? Made in USA kind of thing. So I'll be uh, cutting those things off of there and making this back into a normal vice grip. This said auto body tools and I got it for five bucks. I don't even know what's in here. So let's see together. 280 strips, 280 strips, 100 strips. Oh, some body hammers. It's all right. A grater, a sanding board, a roll of tape and four dollies. Now well, that's okay for five bucks. Except I'm not sure if it'll fit in my toolbox. Now this looks interesting. We got some micrometers. Two one inch mics, a two inch and a three inch. And I think it's a three inch that I'm missing. I'm not sure. Let's check. Well, so much for that. I mixed them in with all the mics I already had, and I'm still missing a three to four. I got to keep my eyes peeled for one, but yeah, a three to four and a four to five actually is what I'm missing. But anyway, we muddled through with what we've got. And uh, well, here's the last thing. I got this for 17 bucks. This is an 1850 Holly, which is a 600 CFM vacuum secondary. And this is a good one. You see, there's no there's no suffix after it it's just 1850 not 1850-1-2-3 -1 those are all the revised ones that came uh over the years that started showing up with lots of plastic stuff on them like this turned into plastic and they were just not as good as these really old ones you know so um yeah for 17 bucks it looks like somebody's been in it it probably sat around for a while and then the car wouldn't start or whatever doesn't matter there's no cracked ears on the base plate uh the throttles are free so um we really got something good to work with here and it's got the electric choke kit on it i mean that that they're probably a hundred bucks just to buy that so win-win and it came with a with a spare front bowl with the um with the bowl vent on it that would be off a um that would be off a factory installed Holly carburetor. Who knows where that came from? It's an oldie too, eh? See, it's got a brass float. Wow. Anyway, hey, for $17, I'll buy that every time. Well, I guess that'll wrap up the show and tell stuff for uh, another episode. I love showing you all the stuff that we come across. And I do get a lot of... Um, comments and messages from viewers that say hey we really like the show and tell stuff well i have to tell you i like it too anyway i'm gonna go now i'd like to thank you for tuning into our channel i hope you'll come back and see us again and until then i'm kevin saying so long from the claremont classic garage <laughs>